Good evening. I hope this is working because we're in my new shed for the first time. Um, so the sound's a little bit tinny because we haven't got all the soundproofing up yet. But so I'm hoping this works because I'm hoping that our new internet works out here. So if it does work, um, pop me a thumbs up or a comment. On the subject of comments, feel free to ask questions the whole time. It will be much appreciated. Um, and I will answer them as I go. And the questions don't have to be about today's topic. They can be about anything at all. Well, not anything at all, anything sound fitting related, preferably. Um, and I'll do my best to answer them. Also, oh, thank you, Katie, so that you can hear me perfectly. <laughs> um, also, this is so this is being streamed live at the moment on both PB Saddlebury Facebook page, on my own Facebook page, which is Poppy Weber, which is a day in the life of a saddle fitter, and it's also being streamed live on YouTube. So hello to wherever you're watching and whether you're watching it live or on catch up. Um, during today, I'm going this evening's talk, I'm going to talk about a couple of links and what I'll do is at the end I'll pop the links that I'm talking about into the comments so you can click on some of the research that we're talking about and learn some more. Yay, everyone says it's all working here. That's good. Um, so today I thought we could talk about um, whether basically that age old question, am I too big for my horse? It's something as saddle fitters that we get asked an awful lot if we think that people are too big for their horses. Um, and sometimes it's down to weight and sometimes it's down to saddle size. Um, there's quite a few different varying things. So today we'll run through that. I'll wait for a few more people to join live. In the meantime, you can admire my flower wall that I made myself. I didn't really, I bought it and stuck it up myself. Um, and my phone, my bottle of Baileys that I've kind of started on already. Red velvet cupcake flavour. So, hey everybody. Um, right, so some questions are being asked, asked already. So I'll, I'll run through the saddle size business and then we will um, talk about the questions that are popping up and I'll try and answer them as we go. Basically, this month, so I do a monthly column in Absolute Horse Magazine and this month I was talking about, um, am I too big for my horse? Right, I've worked out a really clever thing that I can do, which is share my screen. So I can show you this month's Absolute Horse magazine. So this is it this month, and it's about, so I'm the one on the left, day in the life of a saddle fitter. And this month, it is about um, the age old question, am I too big for my horse? So there's so much research that's gone on into being too big for your horse, too heavy for your horse, and there is quite a lot of varying ideas. The general consensus at the moment is that 20% um, of your horse's ideal body weight. So general consensus is that 20% of your horse's ideal body weight um, is what the rider and tack should weigh, and no more than that. But studies do vary between 10 and 20%. So some studies say actually that 10% is the ideal weight, 15% um, is pushing it a little bit, and 20% is a welfare issue. Other studies, but in reality that puts an awful lot of riders and horses out of the equation to be ridden. So the general consensus at the moment is about 20%. Now, the horse's ideal weight is a really important thing because as saddle fitters, I, as a saddle fitter, I see a lot of overweight horses. So if your horse's ideal weight is 500 kilograms, but your horse weighs 600 kilograms, you're not looking at 20% of 600 kilograms, you should be looking at 20% of 500 kilograms. Um, and actually, there is kind of argument that that extra 100 kilograms that they're carrying should be taken off um, in terms of how much they can carry in terms of the rider's weight. Because if they're already carrying an extra 100 kilograms on them, then perhaps they shouldn't then also have the weight of the rider as well on top. So that's one reason why it's really important to try and stick to your horse's ideal weight. So when we talk about the 20% rule, um, we do mean the horse's ideal weight. Um, so please don't just make your horse really fat so that it can carry more weight. It's not a good idea. Um, what is your horse's ideal weight? This is something that uh, nutritionists and family, um, families and vets and people can help answer that question for you. So are you too big for your horse? So there are lots of um, ways you could be too big. So we just discussed that 20% thing. Also, the human population is not only getting heavier, but also getting taller. Um, apparently in the last according to Google, over the last 150 years, the human population has increased on average by 10 centimetres. So people are getting quite a lot taller, they're also getting heavier, and meanwhile, we're breeding horses with shorter and stronger backs 
to make them a little bit more athletic. So these horses are bred shorter and shorter backed, humans are getting heavier and taller, and the problem that we then have as a saddle fitter is to fit horses and humans together in one saddle. Well, the horses don't sit in the saddle, but you know what I mean. So we need a saddle that fits the horse, that also fits the rider in. So obviously rider weight is an issue, um, and it's something that people consider, but there's also rider leg length. So when people talk about what size saddle they need, there's, there's so a lot of people, when they think, like, what size saddle do I need? They think that their horse determines what size saddle they need. So I'll often say, to, people will say to me, my horse has a 17 and a half inch saddle. But then the person saying it says it's a 16 and a half inch, for example. The way that you'd work out what size saddle, what size saddle a horse and rider needs is what size the rider needs. So the, the rider's leg length, bum size, all of that contributes to what size saddle they need. And then the horse's back determines the absolute longest length it can be. So there's, we all know the age old thing that you're not allowed to fit a saddle past the 18th rib, which is the last rib. Um, and that is kind of like the general rule. In, nowadays, we are thinking a little bit more it's the tree that can't go past the last rib rather than the panels. But so, so we are limited to sort of the, the rib size with the horse, and then you've got a really long leg rider or a really heavy rider, then they might not necessarily fit into the saddle that fits onto that horse. So if you're interested in horse anatomy and things like that, this here is a really good book. In fact, let me find it on the screen. Bum, 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 here. This book here is fabulous. It's really good. It's got lots of like horse anatomy and stuff like that. And it's here and it's by Gillian Higgins, Horses Inside Out. She also runs courses and she's brilliant. So you can see on this picture of this horse here, you can hear, see his skeleton. His skeleton, yeah. Um, and you can see his ribs. You can see that the um, the vertebrae that the ribs attach to, they're his thoracic vertebrae. Um, and thoracic just basically means ribs. And that part of his body is where all of his organs hang, um, all of the heavy stuff is in there. And for that reason, that part of the spine is really, really, really strong. So where you see where his ribs are, that's a strong part of the spine and that's a part of the spine that we like to put the saddle on and sit the saddle on because going further past that is a much weaker part of their back. So we want to stay on that nice strong part of their back. If we go too long on there, then we can cause problems by having the saddle on the part of the back that's a bit weaker. So that's the part of the back we want to sit on, it's a bit with the ribs. So when we refer to T18 or thoracic 18, it's the 18th thoracic vertebrae, which means the bit of spine that the last rib attaches to. So. So I was saying that like the tree can't go past that, but the panel the tree can't go past that, but the panel can. So basically, it's 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 a tricky one now in terms of saddle fitting. But we're going to say, for the sake of argument, that the 18th rib is the last one that you can fit to. So what happens when I go out to saddle fitting and there's a 13-year-old girl who's got legs like a spider um, and really long legs, and she's on a lovely little 13-2 pony, but she's just too tall for it. Well, in a sense, therefore, she's not going to be too heavy for her pony but she is going to be too long-legged for her pony because people, riders have to sit in the correct part of the saddle. I have here a saddle tree. Everything's backwards on this camera, so it's really difficult to work it out. So that's a saddle tree there. Now your rider wants to be sitting in the middle and the lowest point of the tree, which is in the center. Um, and then you want them to be able to sit correctly. So if you imagine, if someone, for example, was sitting on the back of this tree, then not only would you have too much pressure here at the back, but it would also tip the saddle like that, the doink, and that there is called the point, and that would jam into the back of the horse's scapula. So they have to be able to sit centrally in the tree because the tree is here to distribute your rider's weight. So the reason we have a tree in the saddle is to make sure your rider's weight is distributed evenly from front to back. So which is why when we fit saddles, we make sure we fit them like this, we don't fit them like this. We don't fit them like this because we want them to sit nice and flat and square and evenly so that your rider's weight is distributed from front to back. So a rider that's too heavy for their saddle or too big for their saddle, and we've all seen them, whose bums hang over the back. Let's find a picture of someone like that. Mm, is it this one here? Right, so here we go. So can we see on here? 
how all of these riders are sitting in the tree and the saddle. So the rider to the left, um, she's classed as the light rider. She fits into her saddle nicely. She sits in the center of the saddle. The moderate one also sits fairly centrally in the saddle. But then when you start looking at the heavier and the very heavy rider, so the ones on the two right hand side, you can see that they're not sitting in quite such a sort of shoulder hip heel position because they're being pushed to the back of the saddle a little bit more. So you can see on those people there why how the tree would be doing that and tipping them back and therefore lots more pressure on the back of the tree here and then this point here would be jamming into the front of the, into the back of the scapula. So this is a this is a bit of research that was done. Um, it's a fantastic bit of research and it's all about um, how the influence of the rider and their body weight and their ratio of their body weight on the saddle. Um, and we can see here on these ones here that they the, the larger the bottom, the, the different they sit on the saddle. So this bit of research is fantastic and I'm going to pop a link to it. It's been done by hmm, lots of people. Um, Sue Dyson. Um, this here is uh, bio, the biomechanics guy as well. So there's lots of lots of really good people done this research and it is brilliant. So I'll put the link to that. It's very scientific, but it basically says that the heavier the rider and the taller the rider, the less well they sit in the saddle and the less well the saddle therefore fits. And the result that that has on the horse is increased lameness. So in some cases, horses that weren't lame with a light rider became lame with a heavy rider. And in other cases where horses were showing some signs of lameness of the light rider, the lameness became much heavier with a heavy rider or a bigger rider. But it isn't all about the weight. A lot of it is about the seat size and where they sit in the saddle. And it's not always about the height of a horse. So we get asked a lot, you know, I've got a 14, people say I've got a 14 two pony, can I get a 17 and a half inch saddle on him? In some cases, yes, I have known of, well, my son actually had a pony that was 13 three, and you get a 17 and a half inch saddle on him. Equally, I've got horses on my books who are 17 hands and you can't get more than a 16 and a half inch saddle on them. So it's not to do with the height of the horse, it's to do with the length of their ribs. Um, and as you can see on that picture of the horse's ribs, it's also to do with the angle of the ribs. So, oh, hang on, I'll get this up, it's clearer. So some horses have very angled ribs and some horses have much straighter ribs. So the angle of the ribs also makes a really big difference. So to find out how long your horse's back is, is you find that last rib, you poke around. Some horses are a bit chubby and they're difficult to find. You poke around, you find the last rib and you follow the line up um, until it gets kind of to the where the saddle sits and you see the saddle sitting over that line. But yeah, so like I was saying, so some horses have quite straight ribs and some horses have very angled ribs. The more angled they are, the shorter the back tends to be. There's quite a lot of anecdotal um, suggestions that horses with what we would say more bone, which is in other words like a greater circumference around the metatarsal areas, um, can carry a heavier weight. Um, that is currently just anecdotal evidence. There's no actual real scientific evidence to show that that's true. Um, it kind of makes sense to be true, but there's currently nothing to say that that's definitely true. So whilst we think the heavier horses can carry more weight than the fine boned horses, it hasn't actually been scientifically proven yet. And there's quite a lot of research going on into that at the moment. But um, the other issue that you have with the heavier set of horses is that they're often very short ribbed. So you sometimes do have a very heavy set cob with a very, very, very short back. Um, so they're quite difficult to fit people onto. So going back to like the long legged riders. So one thing about the saddle is where their legs sit. So there are a few things that we can do to get like the longer legged rider into a, into a shorter saddle. So if you think this was a saddle and you had a knee block here, where the rider's knee sits, it determines on how, where their bum sits because if they've got a really long thigh bone and their knee sits here, it's going to push their bum off the back of the saddle. Um, so one thing we can do is you can bring the flap forward. We can change the shape of the knee block so that the knee goes underneath it more so it doesn't push it to the back of the saddle. Yeah? I can't make that sit straight. 
Um, let me find a photo. Another thing that we can do, so like with a custom made saddle, we can shorten the panel. So the panel is like the squishy bit. So imagine on a trip on a saddle, the squishy bit here that we put flocking in, sometimes it's foam, that sits on the horse's back. So if you go for like a custom made saddle or indeed some of some particular brands of saddles are deliberately like it, you can have a short panel. So I found a photo of a short panel saddle here to show you. This is one of our little jump saddles. But can you see that on the squishy bit that touches the horse's back, other side of there, um, that squishy panel there is much shorter than the actual seat. So things that we can do to make a long-legged rider fit in, or even a bigger bottomed rider, is you can extend the seat out a little bit and you can shorten the panel a little bit. Yeah. So that's what the short panel saddle looks like. Not necessarily the jump version, but that panel at the back. That's a short panel saddle. Let me have a look and see if there's any questions. Hmm. Lots of people say they can see me. Let me find, here we go. Right, let me get to that question in a minute because that's about things. How do you find saddles for an adult on a pony? So there are lots of things you can do. For first of all, some ponies have really long backs and you can find a perfectly decent sized saddle on it. Um, other things you can do, like I just said, you can get something with a short panel and an extended seat if you've got the budget to go for something made for you. Um, you can flatten the seat slightly. If you imagine a flatter seat, if you imagine like a flatter seat, this is a dress size seat, so it's not a very good example. Imagine a really flat seat, you, you've got more room in the saddle, whereas if you've got a really deep seat, you're kind of locked in a little bit more here. So that's why you often see um, people on the flatter seated ones with big bottoms. Um, so, and and there is also the point at which you get to, and you have to say that actually you can't find a saddle that fits the rider and the pony. It does happen sometimes. If you can't get the riders, so whether it's because they've got a larger bottom or they're heavier or they've got a really long leg, if you can't get them to sit centrally in the saddle, then they're going to be putting too much weight at the back of the saddle, which is what causes that problem where you get all the pressure points here and then it bashes the back of the scapula here. So if you can't get, if your saddle fitter can't get you to sit centrally in the saddle with your leg hanging down, then you can't fit into a saddle that fits your pony. So sometimes it's not a case that it's too heavy for your pony, sometimes it's a case that you can't fit into a saddle that fits your pony comfortably. Harry Cedric, love your jumper. My jumper is my Equi Boodle and Emily Cole illustrations. It's a new one. It's got thumb holes. And it's also got like one of these kind of necks. And it snuggles you up. It's very snuggly. I love it. Lisa, love the shed. Thanks. Could a 16 and a half inch saddle on a big horse do damage? So no, so if the rider needs a 16 and a half inch saddle and the horse is massive and can take a 22 inch saddle, putting a 16 and a half inch saddle isn't going to do it any damage as long as the rider fits into the 16 and a half inch saddle. So um, an example would be like a small rider on a big horse. Um, it's better to have a small rider in a saddle that fits the rider than it is to have a saddle, a, the small rider into a big saddle that spreads the weight on the horse. The reason that we have saddles is to distribute the weight on the horse. So if, and so I, in an ideal world, obviously you want as much weight distribution as you can get, but if you put a tiny little dot of a person who needs a 16 and a half inch saddle into an 18 inch saddle, they'll swim around and they won't sit centrally. And what we want is for people to sit centrally in the saddle so that when they're sitting there naturally, like we saw in that thing with the three with the four riders and two of them were in that chair seat because they didn't fit into their saddle properly but the first two were in a much more kind of shoulder hip heel position if you're too big for your saddle or too small for your saddle then you're not going to sit in the correct position so whilst we do want to distribute the weight as much as we can on a big horse because we've got all that space to do with it in theory and your horse could in theory take more than a 16 inch saddle if you yourself need a 16 and a half inch saddle then it won't do it any harm by having a 16 and a half inch saddle as long as that saddle fits the horse 
and fits the rider. However, if the rider that needs a 17 and a half inch, the horse needs a 17 and a half inch and you squeeze them into a 16 and a half inch, then their bum is going to be in the wrong part of the seat and they're going to bedoink like that and it's going to jam that and it's going to put all the way through there, um, which we don't want. Um, Lauren, uh, what's Jilling Higgins like? It was fantastic. She is fantastic. Enjoying this as you're coming back to Peter's with my long-legged 12-year-old. Woohoo! I love long-legged 12-year-olds. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, so hopefully your long-legged 12-year-old has a saddle that um, fits her long legs in. Um, last week, in fact, I went to see somebody and she had such long legs and she was a skinny little beanpole, but she has such long legs that um, the only option that she had was to have a completely different saddle because she just didn't fit into her, her GP saddle. You do often find that people with very, very long thighs, it's usually the thighs, like very long thighs, um, can fit into the jump saddles a little better because, let me show you that jump saddle again. When you look at this jump saddle, you'll see, mm, there it is, that the knee block angle means that you can sort of slide your, like your knee under that block so your knee can kind of poke out without coming over the block. Because if the, if the block's underneath your knee and pushes your knee out, it's going to push you back in the saddle. The other option, ironically, is um, dressage saddles can be quite good for the very long-limbed riders because they are hanging their legs down rather than trying to bring them back behind a block in the same way. So they can sit them a little bit more like that rather than like that. Yeah, so dressage saddles sit you like a bit like an old-fashioned clothes peg. Um, uh, message you on your Facebook page about the question or see if I can find that. Deb, is it always better to have a custom made saddle for horse and rider? No, absolutely, definitely not. Um, there's plenty of off the peg saddles that will fit um, horse and rider. Um, it, it, custom made are, can be better for the very, very tricky fits sometimes, but they're obviously more expensive. Um, and often the tricky fits are where the rider is bigger than the then the saddle naturally wants to sit on the horse. But no, it's not always better at all. There are, I would say, in terms of saddle sales, I think probably one tenth of the people I see need a custom made saddle. Um, definitely not always better. Nice, if you can afford it nice and you can have pink welting on it and stuff like that. Kirsty, I had to downsize to a 16 and a half inch working saddle and adjust myself to ride in it. I did all the best of the pony and his back. So, yeah, so it's often very tricky adults trying to fit into sort of 16 and a half inch working hunter saddles um, because for starters, the working hunter saddles have got a very straight cut, so they don't really allow your leg to go anywhere. And again, so if you're very straight here, you haven't really got anywhere for your leg to go, so it tends to push your bum out of the back. Um, so often in that case, you do have a bit like seat extensions and stuff on it. It is a, it is a thing. Um, that people do suffer with, with the other shorter ponies. Amanda, what are the differences in looking for a dress size saddle versus a GP? So the physical differences are a dress size saddle is, tends to be deeper seated and, and they're much straighter cut the dress size saddle um, because they're designed, like I said a minute ago, to sit you like an old fashioned clothes peg. So you don't really sit on your bottom, you sit like that with your kind of hips open and you sit it forces you to sit in a much more sort of dressage seat with a longer leg. Um, other differences are that the dressage saddles tend to have dressage girths, so long straps, short girths, to get the bulk out from under your legs so you can really wrap those long hanging legs around. They tend to have a deeper seat and they are very difficult to jump in on the whole, although I have been known to jump in mine. Um, and a GP saddle is called a, is a general purpose saddle, so it's designed to be able to do a bit of flat work, a bit of jumping, a bit of everything. Some people, not always myself, but some people will say that a GP saddle is kind of a jack of all trades and a master of none. Um, and it is certainly getting much more popular nowadays for people to have a dressage saddle and a jump saddle rather than a GP saddle. Um, so a GP saddle is, they tend to be slightly less deeper seated. They, they are slightly more forward cut. They tend to have the shorter, the short girth straps and the long girth. But um, GP saddles actually there's a huge variety because they go from like the VSD right up to VSS. So some are a little bit more dressage and a little bit straighter cut. Some are a little bit more jumpy, a little bit more forward cut. 
Um, but yeah, on the whole, the dress style saddles are designed just for flat work, whereas a GP saddle is designed to do a bit of everything in. Um, however, I see lots of people that do almost everything in a dressage saddle. They'll hack in it, they'll go on sponsored rides in it, they will do dressage in it, they'll have their lessons in it because they are, well, a lot of them are very comfy. What do I think of the Schlees saddles? Um, I don't really know enough about them uh, to comment. I know that there's a lot of research done into them and if anyone's interested, um, it's definitely looking worth looking up and looking at the research done because it's quite interesting but I've never ever I don't think seen one in the flesh I don't think so I've been mining 17 and a half inch for years and now my own giant is like one of it thank you Bobby um, that's the lady that asked about a 16 and a half inch so yes yeah, so Lisa if you're a 16 and a half inch if a 16 and a half inch saddle fits you you have absolutely um, nothing to worry about about putting a 16 and a half inch saddle on your horse if that's the size that you are um, because you're much better off in a saddle that fits you and that you're securing and not flipping around in then you are in one that's bigger does changing stirrup length then change the rider position for the better or for the worse if they are too small in the saddle hmm. so a lot of people that are too small in the saddle um, bring their stirrups up because when you're too small in the saddle certainly in a gp or a jump when you've got, think when you've got the flap coming out the front here, when you're too, this is so confusing it being backwards. Um, that way. So if you think your flap comes out here um, on a GP or a jump saddle, and so your knee block sort of sits here, and so your knee block, if you're too small in the saddle, then you're, you're often a miles away from the knee block. So people often put their stirrups up to get their knees closer to the knee block, and then all that does is scoot their bum too far back in the seat. So, and because they've got so much room in the seat, so they're not going too far back because they're too big for the saddle, they're going too far back because their stirrups are coming up, or they end up riding with unnaturally short stirrups to try and hit that knee block. So, so, I'll, so some people like, so sometimes if you set a saddle to a child, for example, who's growing, will sometimes fit them, you know, they've you know, saved up all their money and they're buying a new saddle and everything. And you, we do sometimes fit them a little bit big with the intention of that kid growing, in which case, I'll often say to people, um, something like a seat saver is good because it takes up a little bit of room in the seat. So those Acabella gel seat savers, for example, are brilliant because they are a bit sticky. So for little kids, it stops them from sliding around. So when the seat's too big, kids can really sort of slide around in the saddle. So the Acabella gel seat savers are really good for that, as are lots of other seat savers, but I do think they're the best. Um, and then also you can get knee blocks, like Velcro knee blocks. So if you get one with Velcro knee blocks as well, then you can move the knee blocks back. So then that solves that problem with, with people trying to shorten their stirrups to meet the knee block, if you can bring the knee block back. So for that reason, Velcro knee blocks are really good, and so are the sticky seat savers. So if you do, for example, for a child, when you fit a saddle a little bit big, because you expect them to grow into it, then sticky seat saver and knee blocks, Velcro knee blocks, I do find are a bit of a godsend. Um, because you don't want to make them change their stirrup length to adjust their position because then they're riding with a, a ridiculously short stirrup length just to try and get the knee block. Does that make sense? Any tips for a short ride and a dress size saddle? Hmm. Short as in, like really short? Um, have you got quite short thighs? Because sometimes short riders and dress size saddles do struggle a little bit with the dress size blocks because the knee blocks are very straight and sometimes short legged riders struggle with, especially if they've got quite a wide horse, so when you sit again in the dressage saddle, you sit like um, an old fashioned clothes peg with your hip flexors really open. So if you've got short legs, you can find almost like you've almost like a little kid on the Thelwell pony, so your legs stick out the side. And then it's very difficult to get your legs in and behind the knee block. So I some so my tip for a short rider in a dressage saddle is to get your saddle fitter out and try loads of different dressage saddles. And um, because some have got a much more angled knee block and it comes much higher up your thigh. So you sometimes find that when you've got like riding like you're doing splits um, and you're trying to wedge your little legs in behind the blocks, the blocks are in the wrong place. So try lots of different ones with different blocks. Um, and remember, you don't always have to dressage in a dressage saddle if you're more comfortable in a GP saddle. Kerry Holmes, long-legged. This is a very large, she's one of my clients and she's a very long-legged rider. I'm so grateful for you to explain this to me, missing my horse and I feeling so much better when I'm new saddle. There you go. So she is somebody that's had to have a jump saddle very 
forward cut jump saddle because a normal jump saddle, her leg, I don't know if you can see in her photo, her leg literally comes right over the front of the saddle. So, and like, she's by no means too heavy for her horse. Mm -mm. She's, like a, she's like a string of spaghetti, but she is too long legged for a normal saddle to fit her horse. So if she wasn't able to go for this customized saddle, she would be somebody that would almost have to say, you are too big for your horse. By no means is she too tall or is she too fat or is she too heavy? Definitely not. But she's so long legged and her horse isn't particularly long backed. So we were struggling to get her leg into a saddle. Good person to have popped up. Fiona, I have an 18 inch dress size saddle with long flaps and knee rolls. I am five foot two. Whew. This saddle tips me forward and gives me a lot of issues and it gives me chronic sacroiliac pain since having it. I've asked for a second opinion from a master saddler in my area, but will not look at it because he's been fitted by another SMS fitter. Fiona, I would go back to your original fitter. Um, so it's true, they don't, yeah, us uh, SMS fitters, we like to, we like people to sort things out with the fitter that sold them the saddle initially. But um, if you are not happy with the saddle you've got, and if it's 18, I obviously can't comment on the size of your bottom um, or anything. And also bearing in mind that 18 inch in one make of saddle is more like a 17 inch in another make of saddle. So there's a lot of discrepancy in the sizes of saddles. But if you're in a saddle and you feel like the flaps and the knee rolls or the seat size don't fit you properly and it's causing you pain, try going back to your original saddle fitter um, and ask them, or even if you just ask them permission to go to another saddle fitter, um, and see how that goes because sometimes we just need permission from the original saddle fitter just to go because we don't want to be poaching other people's clients really it's not very nice um yeah and good luck with it and you look like you've got a lovely horse by the way in the picture claire baker i have girth drama <laughs> it's making the pad roll up scrunch up when tightening which you can adjust when on the ground but can't in the saddle. oh that's so yeah that happens i find that happens sometimes with but the, is it Wintec? Wintec girths, um, sometimes I find snag the saddle pad on their way up. And I also find that sometimes some of the other makes have got like the Thoroughgood or the HY ones who are very popular. And there's nothing wrong with the girths, by the way, they're fine. But they've got like underneath the elastic. So where the elastic is, they've got like a little flap of girth that goes up. And as you do your girth up, your elastic goes up and then that bit sort of tucks underneath the saddle pad. And when you do it up, it pulls the saddle pad up. Sometimes it catches on the bottom of the saddle flap as well. I would say you could do either. You could change your saddle pad so it's longer so that when you start to do it up, you've already overlapped it. So you're not starting underneath it and then snagging it on your way up. So if you can start with your saddle pad already overlapped, that will help. Or if you go for a longer girth, like a, just two inches longer, it might be that when you start doing the girth up, it's already over the saddle pad instead of snagging it on the way up. I think I know what you mean. That might not be what you meant, but I think it's what you meant. Do you know for Western saddle weights, change how much a horse can carry as they have a larger distribution of weight yeah so they do have a much larger distribution of weight anyone that knows western saddles and i'm not a western saddle expert at all i've ridden in one twice didn't like it um then you they do have a much so yes yeah, so in theory they've got a wider distribution of weight but they still the horse still can only carry a percentage of its body weight whether it's 10 percent or 20 percent whatever we're going by um so that so whilst it's more Whilst some people would say that the weight distributed over a wider area is better, um, there is still the, the, the maximum weight a horse can carry still applies. Does that make sense? What's the best make of dress size saddle on someone on a wide horse and a short rider? Um, there's bazillions of different makes of dress size saddles. Um, so the wide horses can, the wide horse and the short rider is a, and a dress size saddle is actually something that is a bit of a problem sometimes because as we said earlier when the way that dress our saddle sit you like that rather than like that rather than, so you don't sort of if this works no way. so they sit you like that rather than like that so you don't sit on your bottom as such you kind of sit more on your fork and because of that if you've got short legs your legs already are going to have a tendency to kind of come out a little bit like they're well and if you've then got a wide horse extra fell well um, so your legs don't hang sometimes in dressage saddle in the same way. So when we have these lovely, beautiful dressage saddles with the really big, long, straight, blocky blocks on the knee, 
than these poor people with these big straight blocks and these little farewell legs that want to sit at this angle. So sometimes it depends. Sometimes it's a case of finding a dressage saddle that you can alter the angle of the of the knee block. Sometimes it's a case of smashing out and getting a custom made one and then making a block around where your leg naturally wants to sit in a dressage saddle. Sometimes you can get lucky. Um, I love always on the wider types. I do think that often the ideal Jessica's dressage saddles fit really nicely on the native types. Um, but they, and they're not too blocky, so they don't lock your leg in in quite the same way. So that might be worth a try. But yeah, get your saddle fitter out and try lots and lots of different ones because that short leg to wide pony dressage saddle combo is a bit of tricky sometimes. Ellie Corcoran, I still love my custom made PB dressage saddle. Ellie had the nicest one ever. She had like red underneath it. So like when you flip the saddle up that way, along the length of the gullet, she has a red leather one. So it's very pretty. Fiona says, I have, they won't do anything. Oh, that's about the SMS. Um, it might be worth contacting SMS direct and seeing if they can help you. They can often mediate for you. Um, if a saddle is fitted correct, it's correctly fitted, what is the effect of using pads under them other than a numbness saddle pad? Uh, this is a question we get asked tons as well. And um, there's not really, it depends on what you're using underneath, obviously. Um, so first of all, a lot of people say, oh, if your saddle fits, you don't even need to use a numbness. Well, my shoes fit, but I still like to wear socks with them. Because, you know, like bare leather against backs, especially clip backs and stuff, or like it gets a bit sweaty. You also put a numna one to protect your saddle. So um, leather is really permeable, like things can soak through it. So like when we reflock saddles, when you reflock an old saddle and you take out all the old flocking, sometimes it's really, bleh, it's like yellow and bleh, because it's had sweat soaked through it for so many years. So numbness really do help with that, for starters. So a lot of people think you don't even need a numner if your saddle fits, but I would say please do put a numner. A nice cotton numner is always a good thing. Um, and then other pads, so like half pads, I guess she means, and like gel pads and things like that. Loads of research done, again, with, um, and I can never pronounce this, Centaur Biomechanics, Centaur, C-E-N-T-A-U-R. Everyone's going to tell me now how to say it. Um, they have done research with Mark Fisher from Walkoff Saddling and lots of other people. Um, there's a of really good research about how half pads and things and pads affect the fit of the saddle. And the consensus used to be, we used to worry that if you put like an extra pad in here, it would make the saddle narrower, but actually a, a good, a decent half pad, what they do is they lift the saddle. So they don't really change the width, they just lift the whole thing. Um, some horses love having extra pads on other horses don't need it at all on a very cobby type for example i wouldn't want to put any extra padding on because you really want to sit into the saddle as much as you can um if you've got like a more typically thoroughbred type one that's got you know something with a little bit of muscle wastage behind the wither something that when you look at it you can kind of see that sort of almost like half pad shape of muscle missing from its back then sometimes they're really good ones to put a half pad on if you're going to use a half pad um the gel pads have um some quite good feedback. There, in I think in some of the research that was done, gel pads didn't fare very well in very hot weather, but I'm guessing that's because they melt a little bit. Um, and always, if you're using any kind of fluff, please make sure it's real fluff. So no fleecy stuff like that, only real proper sheepskin, preferably still on the skin. So proper sheepskin only if you're gonna use fluff because it doesn't make the horse sweat in the same way and it's much more breathable and it's much more natural against their skin. But saying that, if you've got a big chunky cob type, um, then don't put a lot of bulk under there personally, I wouldn't. Just because it makes you wiggle around on the top and something that's already a little bit wiggly. Linda Wells, I have a giant saddle well. Oh, um, I can't pronounce that word, but I know which one you mean. I have an 18 inch saddle, old style base, fits well, but have girth problems. Tried loads, but the most secure one is an old boarding girth fitted just behind legs in a 62 inch girth, no elastic. Any others you can think of? Um, it depends what kind of girth problems you have, what girth problems you have, just finding them long enough? Um, or do you have problems with girth slipping or chafing? Or Let me know what girth problems you have. Georgie, thank you. No problem, my lovely. Tori, using the VIP pads to help the horse back. I've never used a VIP pad. I've seen them a lot in saddle fittings and I've fitted saddles with them a lot and they are 
I don't want to say they're great because I don't know because I've not used one um, and I don't th believe that any research has been done with them properly but I have to say that they do seem to address a lot of the issues that the gel pads suffer from so um, I, for anyone that hasn't seen one they're like it's like a gel pad but quite thin I reckon three millimeters thick quite a thin one um, and then maybe four millimeters and then it's kind of covered and it's got like a bobbly bit on one side and a smooth bit on the other I'm describing it really badly, I know, I'm so sorry. Um, and if VIP people are watching, I'm sorry, you can feel free to correct me. But that's what they look like. They're like bobbly on one side, smooth on the other. And they seem to, partly because they're very thin, and partly because they're kind of held together with whatever it is they're coated in, um, they, they do seem to, A, not add a lot of bulk, and B, they don't disperse in the same way that other gel ones can. So some gel pads, you see, especially the cheap gel pads, you put them on and they sort of slide out underneath the saddle and they stretch. And a lot of them have got those holes in and so they sort of suck up. Never put one against the horse's back, by the way. Never, ever, ever put gel against the horse's back because they sort of suck and they've got create suction and chafage and it's not nice. So I've never tried a VIP pad personally. Um, I do fit saddles with them quite a lot, more, more and more popular, they're getting very popular at the moment and I see some people who think they're brilliant. Their gel does add a layer of shock absorption, um, so not everybody needs that layer of shock absorption, some people do need that layer of shock absorption, um, but gel does give you a little layer of shock absorption and if you're going to put gel on, then my limited experience of the VIP pad does say that they are a fairly decent version of a gel pad. You pay me for that. Fiona, I have got in touch with the SMS. They told me to get another SS Master Saddler, but no one will do it. Um, I would get back to the SMS and ask them if they could maybe contact the original saddle fitter for you or the one that you wanted to do it with. Um, that would be my suggestion. And good luck. For showing, would you suggest a numner half pad or don't come horses back? I would. I'm not a shower. I don't like showing. Would you take your beloved pride and joy, and you brush it and you wash it and you kiss it and you smoosh its little nose and you love it and you take it into a ring and then someone says they don't like the look of it. Showing is not for me. However, um, so I don't know enough about showing rules other than I know people like to see as much of the horse as possible. If you can, I'd put a little thin, very, very discreet num num under there. Um, it's just a little bit nicer on the horse's back and it's also much nicer, nicer for your saddle and the saddle's flocking. Both finding long ones, but saddle slipping as a horse's big bow. That's it, comptoir. I should know that because I speak French, but um, bonjour, ça va. There you go. Um, both finding long ones. So I, I see a lady and she has a horse and has a 76 inch girth. It's a, I can't remember what it is now, hand. But anyway, um, yeah, she gets her girth from America um, because they have a lot of very large girths in America. Um, so, and saddle slipping, I can't remember what type of go if you said you had, hang on, an old boarding go. So yeah, that, they're, they're quite narrow. So basically stop, if you, if you, if you, if your saddle slips, it's not always a girth thing issue, it's often a saddle issue. Um, so one thing you can do is think about different girth straps on your saddle. So I'm not sure if you've got extra straps on it. Um, point and balance straps can really help, balance straps in particular. Definitely worth speaking to your saddle fitter and telling them that your saddle slips. Um, because sometimes it's about different, sometimes it's about a different saddle full stop. Other times it's about um, a different girthing system. Sometimes it can be like the girth itself can really help. So if you think about girth, the wider the girth, the more coverage it has underneath the horse and therefore the more grip you get. So the little twiddly narrow girths don't give you a lot of grip and they can force out to slip. So if you can find a wide enough one. I tell you, I do think do long ones actually are... Professionals Choice, and they do one that's almost like a bit neoprene-ish on one side, and you can like, it's like a belt pull on, you can pull it off and clean it. Ven Ventec, VTech, something like that. Professionals Choice, I think they come really long, and they're a little bit sticky, and they're brilliant girths, they're very good girths. My saddle fits forward, slip the tips forward. I've been told to use a half pad with front risers to stop this by my saddle fitter, but this makes my saddle slip horrifically. Mm, I would get your saddle fitter back out. Um, so what the, the, what they've done is your saddle tips. Your saddle's slipping forward, 
So I told you to put some pads in the front to lift it to make the balance back right again. Um, but then sometimes what can happen is, like we were saying about the cobs and half pads, is that it makes the saddle just sit a little bit too high up. Um, and then it can slip because it's not sitting into the walls properly. So I would definitely suggest just getting your saddle fitter back out and just seeing if they can do it with flocking instead of with pads. If you've got a flock saddle um, or if the saddle can be adjusted at all. Because where they've padded it out with the pads in the front, sometimes you can just add flocking in there to do that. So it might be that they've put pads in because they thought it's going to be a temporary thing. Um, or it might be that you've not got flock panels on your saddle. But yeah, if it's any kind of long term tipping forward, then either we would adjust the tree or change the saddle or... We could try flocking it if it was just a if it if everything else about the saddle fits it just needs lifting at the front maybe they could pop out and put a bit of flocking in it for you i've been recommended vip by the stud my horse came from yeah they are being recommended a lot um around they seem really popular um and they seem to have taken off quite well yeah i've done everything they've asked but no one will help me keep trying I would if I were you because the SMS are really good they're a really good governing body and I'm saying that from someone that's governed by them but also from someone that you know knows them and I've seen people I've seen them in action and helping people and stuff like that so definitely keep trying they're probably a little bit everyone's a little bit stressed at the moment with Covid so keep keep going I use a rear riser pad on my 20 year old trotter mare is this okay as a short-term thing and she's only ridden on the odd hack each month. She's a brood mare. I use a filed Davina on her that fits well up with pulling the void of muscle in her back. Yes. Um, short term, I think riser pads are fine, if I'm honest. If it's only a short term thing, um, she's only ridden a little bit. Um, yeah, so as long as it, so if you're otherwise tipping back, um, rear riser pads can help lift you up. So the opposite of the other lady. So rear riser pads can be used when that happens, and then you lift the back up. Um, because the problem is as well, like if you, so say your saddle tips backwards in this case, like that, um, all your weight is there at the back, a little bit like what happens when you're too big for your horse. Um, so all your weight is there, and then what happens is your horse's muscle underneath here goes, oh God, that's a bit uncomfortable, and then it goes, oh God, that's, so it's like a bit of a vicious circle. So often just getting the saddle up and back balance is enough to help the horse lift its back up underneath. So yes, as a temporary thing, visor pads are fine on the whole, as long as everything else fits well. Is there any kind of saddle leather dye you know which works and doesn't run in the rain? Great for only white jobs. Um, so I tend not to use, recommend like normal people, I don't even like it myself actually, like leather dye. Leather dye is really dark stuff. I know this because I once spilled a pot of leather dye on my Laura Ashley rug in my sitting room and it was awful. And then it's like this powder based stuff. And so the more I was trying to rinse it the more I was just diluting it and I ruined my rug leather dye is so dark so especially if you've got a black saddle and you put it on it can look really 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 black like too black so it can look a bit odd and then like you say then you've got your white jods and rubs off unfortunately I'm too old to know the pleasure of white jods I'm more of a cream jod kind of girl but yeah I think that so what I do is I make up um, a solution of like leather balm and I put a little bit of dye in it and then what happens is you kind of as you balm your saddle it gradually gets a little bit darker each time um, without having to go the whole hog and put the dye on you can also seal it you can get a special leather sealant um, which you can put on over once you've done the dyeing um, I think it's Saddle Saddle Clinic um, do a good one um, it's like leather recolouring balsam or something it's called it's very good it's like the one that I make I hope that helped, by the way, finally. Um, I recall on one of your webinars earlier this year when you dismantled a cheap one, you asked opinion... Oh, this is going to be an awkward. <laughs> you asked opinion on the Premier Equine Saddles. You haven't seen one at that time, have you now? What did you think? Mm-hmm. Yes, I have seen one now. <sighs> Tumbleweed. Um, I saw one, it didn't fit the horse, it was it, was, it had been bought for, um, and I had to tell the lady I was very sorry, but I couldn't fit it to the horse. Um, it wasn't the best made saddle I've ever seen. But they're very cheap, and they look in the photos, um, I can see why people buy them, so they do look in the photos very nice. It's not quite. 
Let's go back to something nice. Um, Georgie, are the Acabella gel half pads of cheap skin good to use? Yes, but don't put them directly on your horse's back. Um, do you know what? They're, they're really nice because A, they've got real sheep skin on. B, Acabella are a really nice make and we should all support them. And C, what was C was? Oh, yeah, C. So, so the half pads that have got the, gel, the, that have got the fluff on the front and the back, these gel ones, they're quite nice because they, sort of, they sort of hug the saddle. But the fluff kind of gives it a bit of a hug. And I quite like that. I don't know if you heard, I don't know if the microphone is good enough, but my tummy just rumbles so loudly. I'm really sorry if you did hear that. Uh, anyway, gel half pads. So when they've got the fluff on the front and fluff on the back, they kind of give your saddle a little bit of a hug, they're nice. But don't use them direct on your horse's back because the Acabella ones, as well as all the other ones, aren't designed for use on the naked backs. They can cause pressure points, soreness, rubbing, chafing. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I think that there, I think in terms of budget saddles, there are so many out there, secondhand, good quality saddles that nobody needs to buy a budget new saddle. There's no, there's absolutely no need to do it, but you're, you're so much better off. There's so many Albion's, Ideals, Bliss, there's so many secondhand saddles that you can pick up for a handful of hundreds of pounds that you don't need to go out and spend the same amount on a new one personally even if they look lovely in the pictures because there's a reason they're that cheap you can't make saddles super cheap because the workmanship is expensive and the parts are you really need to work on your face mm, thanks um i do amber major she's in love with a flower warm thanks amber do you also like my I can't really see them on here. Rainbow lights. Mm. Mike, I don't know if you can see this. Leather and teak flavoured candle. Why well, I need a candle that smells of leather when I have a saddle wreath? I don't know. This is my cute stuff. Fiona, frustrated. The SMS wanted a second opinion. No one wants to do it. Contact original fitter. No one wants to do it. That Marcel is going to make sure it's out fits. Hmm. Yeah, honestly, Fiona, the only thing that I can suggest is to contact the SMS because that's what they're there for. And they honestly are very, very, very good. So contact them again and just say that you've contacted them before and you're feeling frustrated. And I'm sure they'll be able to help you, honestly. How often would you suggest cleaning your saddle? Never. Only joking. Not very often. So, so many people over clean their tack and it is not good. I see so many, like, special bridles that are kind of like bleh, scuzzy. I personally think that you should clean your tack when it's dirty um, using a good quality cleaner and more importantly, moisturize your tack. I think of tack as like skin, or it is skin, isn't it? You don't want it to get dried out, you want it to keep it moisturized all the time. So, good quality leather has a lot of its own natural moisture in it anyway. Um, so, when it gets dirty, it gets splattered in mud, give it a wipe down, but every now and again, once a month maybe give it a good moisturizing session too don't over clean it you mustn't over clean them it's horrible if you're if when you touch your saddle it feels like slidey or scuzzy or you could scrape stuff off with your nail you've cleaned it too much caroline quality second hand over cheap and new every time one bazillion percent one bazillion quadrillion gazillion percent definitely you absolutely cannot stress this enough to you to get a good quality second-hand saddle. Even like I see some that, oh my God, I must be like nearly 50 years old and they are better than the new crap ones. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Perfectly fitted by a qualified saddle fitter. Good point, girl, yes. Um, and, and a good, and a saddle fitter will be happy to fit you with a second-hand saddle. They'll be happy to fit one that you found or your friends got, or you know, if they can make it fit, I'm sure they will. Um, Twinkly, it's all. Where's the bun oh, bunting's in the other room. I don't move my camera, it'll fall down. It'll be embarrassing. It's in the other room. After following your advice, I saved for Kenton Masters for my pony and it's perfect. Thank you. That's good, I'm glad. They can be brilliant little saddles. They're so adjustable, really adjustable. I saw one today, I started fitting one today. And um, they're, just, they're, they're just good because they're adjustable, they're lightweight. They have the, the all different girthing options there ready. You know, you don't have to dismantle the, dismantle the saddle and rivet things to the tree and all of that. The girthing options are there. Even the flocking holes are stitched nicely. 
They're good little saddles, the little Kenton Masters. <laughs> I love that I'm cleaning. I feel so less guilty. I very rarely clean my cat. If you're too big for a saddle that fits your horse, can the pressure of being sat in the wrong place on the saddle have an adverse effect for anyone trying to cram their ears into a pony saddle? Yes. So sitting in the wrong place on your saddle creates pressure points. So, and it's very difficult because not everyone can, some people have really tricky to fit horses. Amber is one of them. I can't remember if it's so straight. So yeah, so the old saddle should sit. This is so backward, it's so difficult. Your saddle should sit evenly straight, like not on an angle. So if you're too big for your saddle, you move your weight goes to the back and you cause a pressure point at the back here. So underneath the panels here, there's a pressure point. And then these points here, when that happens, the points go into the back of the shoulder and can create a pressure point there. And also this can happen because you're not sitting stably in your saddle, because you're not sitting centrally, the tree can move too much, or the saddle can move too much and cause a problem. So yes, yeah, so, so for that reason, seats have to be extended, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Otherwise, you can't ride your horse. Tracy, my old saddle, my saddle is an old Barnsby that I've had a new bicycle of it. Oh, I love Barnsby. Barnsby aren't around anymore, and that makes me sad every day. They were just, oh, they've been bought out now by Ideal. So Ideal now own Barnsby, but just not the name because the name got bought out by some random company who now make things and sell them on Amazon. Look up Barnsby on Amazon. A bit weird. Right then, we've come to the end, I think. It's an almost ten almost nine o'clock. So just to run through really quickly what we've done. We've had a quick chat about saddles that are riders that are too big for their horse, whether it's in terms of weight or whether it's in terms of size. So we had a little look at some um at the horses skeletal structure and we had a let me share that so we had a little look at the horses back I said to get this book if you're interested in horses anatomy at all and you can see on here the ribs where we have to sit and that is because that's where all the strong part of the spine is and that's where our saddles have to sit um, and then we oh, hang on, let me get rid of that comment yeah. And yes, everybody, if you're at all interested in anatomy, anything by Gillian Higgins, I'm not sure if any of other books here, are brilliant. Really, really, really good. And if you ever see her doing, she does like um, annual conferences, really good, or training days. She even does like a horse, I think like a horse owner's massage course over the course of a weekend. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Go along and find her on Facebook and... I'm a bit of a fan girl. I actually does some saddle of training stuff sometimes, and I'm that girl in the front of the class with my hand up all the time. I think she gets fed up with me if I'm honest. But yeah, she's brilliant. Really good. So that's the horse's skeletal structure. This is the tree of the saddle that we have to make sure sits on the ribs, not past the ribs, otherwise there's problems. So if you have a sat, so if you are a rider whose horse can only take a 16-inch saddle and you need an 18-inch saddle, then there is a problem. Now, you don't necessarily need an 18-inch saddle because you've got a big bottom, although sometimes that's the reason. Sometimes you need an 18-inch saddle because you've got the world's longest legs, for example, and your legs need to sit in the knee block, and it's going to push your bum out the back of the saddle. So sometimes seat size isn't always bum size. It's sometimes leg length as well. And in the situations where your horse can only take a really short saddle and you've got really long legs, there are some things that we can do. You can extend the seat. You can shorten the panels. And you can change the shape of the knee block and you can flatten the seat and stuff like that. So there are things that can be done, but we cannot work miracles. So there are cases where we have to say to somebody, you are, I'm sorry, you're just too big for your horse. And it's not necessarily you're too heavy for your horse. Sometimes it's just that they are too big physically for their horse to be able to fit into a saddle that fits on their back. Um, I have a Fenton Masters compact. If I have a Kenton Masters Compact GP with a dress size version, it would be a good place to start, or they're so different they can't compare. They are quite different. Get a sound printer to bring you some. It might be worth trying the dress size, um, G the dress size Kenton Masters, but they are on different trees, so get a sound printer. Definitely. And some horses fit their dress size saddles differently than they fit the GP saddles do. So, yeah, definitely get a sound printer. But ask her to bring some with her, because it, her, him, either, um, because it might be a good starting point. 
I love my Kenton Masters, 14 new in 2014, horses. They are very good laws, animals. How far ahead are you now with your fitting visits? Oh, caught up since lockdown. So now everyone, I think, feel free to tell me I'm wrong. I think everyone that needed a, an appointment during lockdown is now either being seen or is in the diary. So we are booked up now for probably eight weeks. Um, with the odd little gap here and there but quite a lot of cancellations are coming up at the moment with like last minute cancellations because people are having to self-isolate or the kids have come home from school because their year group self-isolating and blah 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 so there are quite a lot of last minute cancellations up at the moment but we are booking about eight weeks in advance but we are caught up which is good because we were crazy hence i'm doing this again now i've worked every day forever now we're back in the land of the living on the other end of the scale, the saddle is too big for you. Can it put pressure in the wrong place? Yes, it can, Chloe, my dear. So if you're sitting in the saddle and the saddle is too big for you and your little bum is here, instead of filling it like it should, it's just here, then it means that your bum can go, woohoo, yeehaw, woohoo, yeehaw. So you've got all this movement, which you don't want to have. And so all this movement creates this movement. Um, and it means you don't sit securely. You're a much easier weight to bear. As a rider, you're a much easier weight to bear if you're sitting centrally and securely and still. So shoulder, hip, heel is what you're aiming for, sitting nice and securely. Now, if your saddle is too big for you and your bum can go from here to here to here in an instant, then your shoulder, hip, heel alignment is going to be skew if, and then your saddle balance is going to be wrong. And, yeah, you're obviously going to do less damage than someone that's too heavy because you're lighter. But even so, you still want your weight to be centralised in the saddle for you to be a nice weight for your horse to carry around. Janet White Emerson, I watched a webinar last week. I'm guessing you mean Gillian Higgins. Oh, she's great. We love her. Um, all very important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I'm in diary. Thank goodness. Woo, well done. How excited are you about picking up your latest addiction? I think she means addition because I haven't chosen any latest addictions yet. Although my red velvet cupcake Baileys might be one of them. My latest addition is getting picked up tomorrow and she's called Pumpkin and she's a puppy. And she's gonna be a van dog. She's gonna come out of me everywhere. And she's black and white and she's got ginger eyebrows. And she's an American cocker. So anyone that follows me on Facebook will have seen my other American cocker called Mabel who isn't actually mine, she's my son's, and she looks like a mop, and she's the best dog ever. But because she's my son's, I'm allowed to take her to work. So I bought myself one to take to work, and she arrives tomorrow. Hence she's called Pumpkin, because it's Batman, no, Batman per se, because <laughs> it's Halloween. There we go. We'd love you to do a talk on girths and browns one day too. Tonight would be very informative, thank you. That's fine. So I, I am planning on doing, so now I've got my life back together after lockdown, catch up was just crazy. And now I've got my office built, which is lovely. Um, I'm going to do a monthly live last Friday of every month. And I'm going to alternate it, I think, between like having a specific topic like today and then doing a saddle dissection. Um, because people still ask about saddle dissections. So I might do a saddle dissection every other month, and then like a specific topic every other month. And then I'm also going to do um, every week, probably Fridays, I'm going to do a video on like focus on Kinter Masters GP saddle or focus on girths or something like that and we'll focus in on something and talk about something but they'll probably be pre-recorded so it might if you want a live one about girths and just keep popping up on facebook every now and again and saying that and i'll try and do that uh georgie do you fit a lot of secondhand saddles yes lots of secondhand saddles um we i have to say the second the secondhand saddle market was always the, the we saw more secondhands than new but actually recently i think people in lockdown have gone i'm skint I'm going to buy a new saddle. Uh, it's been, yeah, new saddle sales have not been bad recently, actually. Yeah. Not a question, but super excited to see a new edition. Thank you, Pumpkin. She's going to be called Pumpkin, and she's going to sit here with me and be my best friend, whether she likes it or not. She's going to come out and car with me every day, whether she likes it or not. Best friends forever, whether she likes it or not. I'm going to buy a BFF necklace. Um, Emily Villa, love my Peewee saddle. means I can buy my 13 too without trying to fit into a kid's saddle. So she's just got a little dressage saddle on her pony. Um, and yeah, and you know, and Emily's not the biggest girl in the world, for sure. She's pretty dinky, but she still is very much an adult. And yeah, she's, we've, she's we
Gillian Higgins says, I'm going to discuss how many people are over tightened girths. Oh my God, yes, everyone over tightens. Well, not everyone. Loads of people over tightened girths. I've done a video, actually, I think on YouTube, um, about over tightening of girths and that, how to check your actual girth. Because quite often, horses have like where you, where they get, where you feel for their girth, they often have like a little dent in there. So when you put your hand in, it feels looser than it actually is. Um, so you should really feel underneath their breastbone. Which name I've forgotten now because I've had too many babies. Um, but yeah, so, and the amount of people I go to that do their girth up as tight as it can go, people who have had a saddle for like two years and then their girth straps are three holes out because they've stretched so much, it's too tight. Please don't tighten your saddle that much. And like a lot of people think of it as being like having a tight belt on, but it's not like a tight belt because that's around your waist. It's like having a very, very, very tight bra on because it's around your rib cage. So imagine trying to inhale and exhale with something that tight around your rib cage. No, please don't do it. Right then, I don't know what she's doing. I think someone's tagged her. Um, okay, so lovely to speak to you all. And I will pop up some links. I'm gonna pop up a link to the Gillian Higgins book, which is just brilliant. And I'm gonna pop up a link to that um, piece of research, the influence of rider versus horse body weight ratio and rider horse saddle fit on equine gait and behavior because it's a really, really important study and it's really good and the pictures on it are really interesting to see like the widest size differences and the effect that it has and it's fascinating. Anyway, we've been going there for over an hour so I'm gonna let you get on, on and I'm gonna go and eat my dinner because my tummy is rumbling. So thank you very much for watching, whether you've watched it live or on catch up, please feel free to Ask as many questions as you like. I'm going to be doing another live. Um, so the last Friday of every month, I'll be doing a live, and I'll be doing some other videos on other Fridays, and I might do the odd Friday, uh, the odd live pop up as well as I'm if I get an evening off. It doesn't happen very often. So it's been lovely to speak to you, and I'll see you all really soon. Take care.